Welcome to another episode of iPrint 3D. Today's episode is sponsored by Tango from Voxel Dance. Tango is a slicer software that helps beginners and experts alike to navigate the world of 3D printing with built-in preset parameters and presets that actually work. Even beginners can start to print with just one click. Check it out today at voxeldance.com slash tango or see the link in our video's description. In today's episode, we are going to show you how to use Tango's hollowing system. And it is pretty intuitive and works fairly similar to most other slicer programs. However, it, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, it does, it does have some interesting new features as far as the infill goes, where it offers you a lot of options as far as setting those up. Now, as you can see, this model is big and solid, and he is in need of hollowing. So what you're going to want to do is select the object you want to hollow, click over onto the hollowing menu on the top there. That's going to bring up that window. Go ahead and set your parameters. Now, in this particular case, I am going ahead and going to not use the infill. Um, I will demonstrate how the infill works, but we don't. I don't like using the infill too much. I set the accuracy to 1 and the wall thickness to 1.6. Hollowing type is inside and the filter small shells is checked with a 0 .100 set. Um, once you click OK on that, it's going to go ahead and set up the hollowing on the inside of the part. And once we go ahead and grab that slider over there, we can go ahead and show you that this is in fact now a hollowed part. Uh, now, if you were to use the infill like I demonstrated before in the menu, that would create an infill cross section, which in my opinion kind of defeats the purpose of hollowing. You do have a little bit of a um, uh, suction cupping issue on the, the hands there. Nothing I would be too concerned about, to be honest, but it is a suction cupping issue. Now, if we were to go back into the hollowing mode and add the infill structure, we use the BCC, keep it at the 5mm and 1mm structure radius. That will create an infill structure on the inside of the model. Now, like I said, it kind of defeats the purpose of hollowing because it puts back almost the same amount of material, in my opinion, that you had in there in the first place but it creates this really cool latticing structure that keeps the model strong on the inside. Now, the only other issue here is that if you don't have big enough drain holes to cure all of this material all the way up into the product and you're using resin, not FDM, which I think honestly is what infill is really intended for, um, then yeah, I think you're going to have issues in the future. So this is why I don't use infill too much. Now, if you do have a necessity to use something like infill, I don't see a problem with using it on some smaller objects here and there. You can also tweak the settings to make the cross sections a little bit smaller and to make it a little bit um, easier uh, on the material usage. So, once you have the object hollowed the way that you want to, whether infilled or not, you're going to want to go over to the perforator and you're going to want to punch holes in your print. And the perforator makes a pretty easy job of this. You just set your parameters for how big you want the hole to be, how deep you want the hole to be. You can make them like a cone. Um, it does let you set an individual top and bottom, um, or inner and outer, rather. And you can use those to create uh, the drain holes how you want them. Uh, I do like the way that their drain hole system works. You can push all the holes in. This is very similar to the way Lychee's new system works, where you put the holes in and then you, you, know, you go, okay, then pop the holes out. Uh, you can leave the virtual holes in, of course, in Lychee Slicer, where I think in this, I haven't tried, I don't think you can leave the virtual holes there. I think you need to actually click OK and actually punch those holes out of the model. Um, this is probably the second easiest way I've seen to hollow and put holes in. So this definitely gets a 10 out of 10. I think this works really good. 
Um, so yeah, I, I this is this is pretty much it. I might punch one more hole right there in the tail, maybe. Yeah, one more hole right above the bigger one. And then again, you just every time you punch a hole, if you, if you want to, you know, you, you can do it separately like I did, or you can do them all at once. And then you have your holes. We'll um, do a little demonstration, I think, in a later video where we'll we'll take this and then support him as well. Uh, but there you go. That's the hollowing process. So as usual with these videos, guys, we are comparing this to Chitu Box and Lychee Slicer. So we're going to go ahead and cut over to that footage here in a sec. And I will show you folks the difference in how that functionality does work. Um, you'll see it's a little bit different with each program and how they work. Uh, okay, over to Chidu Box here, we have the same character, of course, just to make it a little bit easier. We're going to head on over to the Prepare tab, and then we're going to head over to the Hollow button. And the Hollow button is going to bring up the Hollowing menu, which has a couple of variations and options on it. And um, you don't, you can't see the menu on this capture, but essentially it has some similar options to, you know, what you'd find in Tango and uh, Lychee Slicer. For some reason, this pops up in a window and it does not get captured in the actual capture. So I apologize for that. But once you set the options that you want for your hollowing, it is going to go ahead and run its little script, which does take a bit of time. Um, I think it's one of the longer hollowing processes I've seen. Like you can actually take a little bit to, to hollow something. Tango is pretty fast. Uh, it goes through the hollowing process, which as you can see here, takes a minute. And then once it gets to the end of the hollowing process, it's going to do a little animation where it will show you um, the hollow model wall. I don't know. I guess it does kind of like a validation thing. Um, so... We're just waiting for this loading bar here, which appears to be taking a, a long eternity. And I did not edit this piece out just for the fact that I wanted to show you the actual difference between each slicer and how they work. So the loading is kind of part of the process. I didn't want to keep all the boring bits in here, but I thought this was important to kind of capture the essence of how long it actually takes to hollow a large uh, model like this one. It's not a very complex model, but it is a large model. And I think that makes a difference as far as um, how long it takes to actually run through this process in the program. And it's just about done. There we go. And there's that little animation I was talking about. That's pretty cool, right? The other, uh, the other programs don't seem to do that. I mean, you can do it yourself if you really want to. Um, there is the hollow. Now we need to punch the holes in. So similar to... Uh, what you have in Tango, you have something like a perforator, but this one's just called Dig Hole. So we're going to click on the model, we're going to click on Dig Hole, and then we're going to go ahead and create the little holes that we need to create in order to uh, get this thing properly set up for hollowing. Now, unfortunately, the other dialog box for the drain holes is also one of those weird boxes that doesn't want to show up either. So those settings you can't see, unfortunately which kind of stinks, and I apologize for that again. Uh, but again, you're, you're just setting the diameter of the hole and the depth of the hole, really, uh, with this function, and whether or not you want to keep the holes when you punch them. So in this particular case, um, you want to punch them, and you know I'm going to demonstrate how the, it keeps the caps, which is kind of cool. Lychee and the other ones, uh, you, know, you, can, you can also keep the material. I don't often use them to just replace uh, the material on the model. So for me, I don't often keep them. Um, but, you know, if it's something that you want to do, it's, it's a very easy thing to do. It does it automatically pretty much there. The box was even checked by default. So once you've dug all the holes in, you are ready to go. And just like Tango... Um, you, you well different actually different than tango you punch the hole and it just literally punches through now there's a way to force the hole punch because some of these are telling me like oh i can't do it because it's either too deep or it's too close to the wall maybe it's too close to another hole so regardless the program is having some fail safe here and it does not want me to do that so in order to bypass that you actually have to check off a box to force it and that will then allow you to place the hole wherever you want because you're now forcing it. 
Uh, so that's a good feature to know because sometimes you might wind up in a situation where the holes just aren't going through and you know for a fact it's not really going to cause a problem. So in order to get past that, you're just going to want to choose the force option, which will then force the hole through the object where you choose to because you chose to force it. And again, you're not going to damage anything. This, this is just going to go right through where it needs to go. Uh, we're going to compare this to the same functionality in Leachy Slicer, and I will show you folks how that works out uh, in just a sec. All right, here we are looking at the Leachy Slicer, and we are going to go ahead and hollow this one. We got my preset there, but we're going to lower the quality because I don't really care too much. Then we'll go ahead and rebuild the hollowing. And then we'll go ahead and place the drain holes. And I love the, this. This interface is great. Very fast. You can you can work very quickly here. There, the interface is very 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 quick. Very similar to Tango's interface. Tango's got a very quick interface too. I feel like Shiju Box is a little slow uh, when it comes to that. And this is more of a work, uh, you know, a workhorse, but. I, I, you know what, everybody has their preferences. Personally, um, it's, you know, it's not my favorite. <laughs> I don't want to play favorites or nothing, but it's not my favorite. Uh, okay, so anyway, that is it for this episode, folks. Um, we do have additional episodes coming out on Tango. Um, keep an eye out for those as they do pop out. Thanks so much. Leave your comments, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you all very, 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 very soon.